This video is brought to you by HoodBeast.com. Design your own custom hoodies. HoodBeast.com. What's up everybody? I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Air Jordan 32. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys. Make sure to give me a follow at RealSethFowler on Instagram and on Twitter if you haven't yet. But with all that being said, let's get into it. So over the weekend, Jordan Brand released their newest performance model, the Air Jordan 32. This is a shoe I was heavily anticipating because I love the Jordan line and I really liked what they did with the 31s. However, the traction wasn't so great. I also really liked how Jordan Brand is taking inspiration from previous Jordan models and implementing those inspirations onto the newest silhouettes. The 31 drew inspiration from the Air Jordan 1, so obviously the 32 was inspired by the Air Jordan 2. Before I get into the video, I just want to let you guys know that this isn't a performance review. This is purely a materials and aesthetics review because I just haven't had a chance to play in them yet. I'm a little frustrated by that because I ordered the shoes on Saturday and I even paid like 15 extra bucks to have expedited shipping and they just got in now. So uh, could have grabbed them at Foot Locker, but you know what? It is what it is. Sorry, not a big deal, but just to let you guys know, don't pay the extra 15 bucks if you have a Nike Plus account. Just wait. The shoe will get there at the same time. So without further ado, here it is, the Air Jordan 32. Right off the the bat you can see the design inspiration from the Air Jordan 2, not only from the shape of the silhouette but also from these ridges on the heel. But we'll get more into that later. Starting off with the shoe, a majority of the material on the upper is of course Flyknit. In the Rosso Corsa colorway of course it's all red. The texture and thickness of the Flyknit varies depending on which part of the upper you're looking at. On the tip of the toe and running along the midfoot of the shoe you've got this really tightly knit and stiffer Flyknit pattern. And then running up the middle of the shoe you've got this more ribbed and flexible material. The Flyknit isn't very soft, it's actually pretty stiff and that's one to maintain the structure of the shoe and also also two to contain your foot on the court. It's also backed by a couple other materials for durability. The only downside to that is that it's not very breathable. Moving up towards the tongue, you've got your black laces woven throughout the upper of the shoe. Unlike other Nike Performance Basketball sneakers, there isn't any exposed fly wire that's all underneath the upper. I really like the way this looks. One thing that kind of concerns me though is that if you want to relace the shoe, I feel like it's going to be really tough, similar to the LeBron 13s, which are almost impossible to relace. I mean, who knows? I haven't tried it, but it just seems like it's going to be tough. Continuing up the shoe, you've got a semi-detached tongue, which is a nice touch because it makes it easier for you to get your foot into the shoe. You've got this plasticky rubber Air Jordan Wings logo in black. Again, that's a callback to the Air Jordan 2 if you didn't already know. Inside the tongue, you've got this tightly knit red mesh. You've also got this little red patch stitched in there that says Bellissimo. The insole of the shoe is black with a button icon that says launch. Around the heel area of the sock liner, you've got some pretty nice padding. I don't like it as much as the padding on the Air Jordan 31, which had these ankle pads that kind of rested in the negative space on your ankle and they felt great. This one's just kind of regular padding and it doesn't feel bad at all. I just don't like it as much as last year's model. As for fit, I'd say go true to size on these guys, but as usual, if you have the chance to try these guys on first, make sure to do that to make sure the sizing is right for you. I have heard from other reviewers and I sort of experienced it myself. When you first try the shoe on, it's gonna feel very tight, but hopefully over time when you play in it, it should loosen up a little bit and mold to your foot really nicely. I'll speak more on that when I bring out my performance review. Moving back on the shoe, you've got these suede or nubuck wings with ridges, similar to what you find on the heel. The laces are connected to these wings, however, they don't weave through them like you find on the Air Jordan 1. They're woven through these nylon straps on the back of the wings. Moving around to the back of the shoe, you find the most obvious callback to the Air Jordan 2, this ridged heel cup. This is a stiffer TPU material, and on this particular colorway, it's got sort of a velvet feel to it. And one thing I found kind of interesting is that I've only touched this back panel of the shoe like three or four times, and the velvety texture is already kind of coming off. It's not really a big deal, and most people probably won't notice it, but it's just something to keep in mind. Moving down the shoe, you've got this midsole that comes up pretty high on the midfoot of the shoe. You've also got the Jumpman making an appearance in black. Finally, moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this semi-translucent red outsole. You've got zoom units in both the heel and the forefoot of the shoe. I personally wasn't able to feel them from just walking around in this shoe, but I'm a pretty light dude, so that might change based on your weight. In the midfoot of the shoe, you've got your flight speed panel, which is only carbon fiber in the exposed area. The traction pattern on the sneaker is a little bit odd. You've got these squares or diamond shapes with these lines running through the middle of them. I'm not sure how it's going to perform. I've heard both good things and mediocre things about it, so I really have to try it out for myself, but I'm interested to see what happens. Overall, I'm actually really impressed with the Air Jordan 32. I think it's a surprisingly good looking sneaker. I probably wouldn't rock these off the court, at least not in this colorway. I think this is a little bit too much and that red October phase is kind of over, but who knows? There are some nice colorways coming out in the future, so we'll see. Performance wise, I'm really excited to try these guys out, so make sure to stay tuned for my performance review coming soon. These shoes retail for 185 bucks, which I don't think is a terrible price. You are getting a lot of good tech with the shoe. It's also a signature Jordan sneaker, which means it's one of the more premium performance basketball sneakers on the market, so 185 really isn't too bad. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's throw these guys on feet and see how they look.
Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Air Jordan 32 and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me in all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.